Hey everybody, it's Will here again. Hope everybody's doing well, and today I want to thank my buddy Alec Frith for lending me a couple of great guitars to demo as part of the 365 Days of Guitar series. And today we're going to be talking about this 1966 Fender Jazzmaster. Let's get into it. I just want to take a minute at the start of this quickly to thank all of the new supporters and subscribers to the channel. I'm really enjoying getting to engage with all of you and all of the positive feedback and comments and shares. It really means a lot to me and I'm really excited to see how this series is growing for 2020. So thank you to everybody. I appreciate you all. Now, let's get into the Fender Jazz Master. The Fender Jazz Master was introduced in 1958 at the NAMM show as what would was to be their top-of-the-line guitar in the range. Previous to this, the top-of-the-line guitar was the Stratocaster. It featured a number of firsts for the Fender Company, uh, including it was the first guitar to feature the so-called offset waist body design, where you can see, if I hold it this way, the left side of the guitar is higher than that of the right side of the guitar, as compared to a Stratocaster style that's hanging behind me where it's consistently round. Uh, it was the first Fender guitar to feature a rosewood fingerboard and uh, this was in 1958. All of the other Fender instruments got a rosewood fingerboard sometime in 1959. Additionally, the changeover from the construction of the one-piece maple neck to the maple neck with rosewood fingerboard meant that the skunk stripe that you see on the back of the necks of the 50s fenders was no longer needed as the truss rod was installed before the fingerboard was put on. It also had a larger headstock shape, two new single coil pickups that they look a lot like Gibson P90s but are constructed very differently where the actual magnets are the pole pieces for the pickups and the coil is wound very flat and it's actually also the reverse wound, so when you have it in the center position, it is hum cancelling. Two single coils, and these are two 250K pots. And another, I guess, sort of a first for Fender was the idea of the preset rhythm and lead circuit. So when the switch is down, you have these two pickups, the switch, and the controls. When this switch here is up, you go to a preset, um, it's just the neck pickup, and you have these two thumb wheel volume and tone controls here. And what that does is, they're actually one meg pots. So the overall sound is a lot darker, and the idea was that you could go between playing rhythm, have a preset kind of a sound, and then when you were to take a solo, you could use the pickup selector and maybe go to the bridge pickup for a brighter solo tone. Fender later did this as well on the Jaguar model of 1962. The Jazzmaster, like I say, introduced in 58 and was made until, I believe, September of 1980. During that time period, there were um, not a ton of changes, but uh, overall, I believe they were usually alder or ash bodies. Again, the rosewood fingerboard, although some models later had maple. Um, in around 1965, you start to see binding on the fingerboard, and by 66, the year of this, you see the block inlays. As with all fenders of the period, they have a seven and a quarter inch radius and a sort of a C-shaped neck. This is a little bit of a thinner C profile as compared to some models that you might see from the maybe earlier 60s. And one other thing that was kind of new for the time was that it had a different style bridge and vibrato tailpiece as compared to the Stratocaster models. Interestingly as well, uh, the Jazzmaster was a guitar that when CBS did move to the three bolt or three screw neck, of uh, the early 70s, the Jazzmaster never did get that transition. So the Jazzmasters always did retain a four bolt or four screw, whatever you want to call it, neck. This particular example is in very good condition. It has lots of honest cosmetic wear, but it plays wonderfully and to my knowledge is all original. 
which is very cool. Uh, I will say myself personally, where I live, you don't see a lot of old jazz masters. Uh, I've seen a lot of old Jaguars and a few old Strats, but uh, jazz masters seem to be less common, which is very interesting. Some notable people that have used the jazz master over the years. It's funny, despite the name Jazz Master, you would think or hope that jazz players had used them, but it was not the case. Um, Noki Edwards from the Ventures was probably one of the earliest adopters, and they were very popular for the surf guitar movement of the early 60s. Um, Jimi Hendrix actually played a couple of Fender Jazz Masters in his days on the Chitlin circuit. Pop Staples of the Staples Singers played a Jazz Master as well. And then later on in the kind of later 70s, you find people like Tom Verlaine of Television, as well as Elvis Costello playing jazz masters. And even into the modern day, bands I believe like Sonic Youth have uh, favored the jazz master or modified versions thereof. Anyway, thank you for taking the time to listen to this discussion portion. And I hope you enjoy getting to hear some sound samples of this 1966 Fender Jazzmaster. If you enjoy this 365 Days of Guitar content, as I say, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, or sharing this video with your friends, even a comment or something on the video, whatever you can do to help support, I really appreciate. And I look forward to uh, letting you hear this guitar, so stay tuned. Thank you.